from the third dimension. This is 3D or 2D.com's Duh 3D Show. Put on your 3D glasses now. If you're wondering what the 3D stand for, they are discussion, debate, and the news. We hope that you enjoy the show. Get it? The show? Duh. Duh. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to episode 101 for the 3D Show. I'm Adolf Figa, and I have with me the Jake. Say hi, classic Jake. Hi, classic Jake. Say howdy, partner. New Jake. Howdy, partner. <laughs> so, we're, we're getting into the end of July, and we got some interesting news here. Some some big announcements and some stuff going on. Some, a lot of trailers dropping recently. So, um, let's just go for some big stuff. Let's go for the, the most recent thing. We got a new Dune trailer. Um, what do you guys think of this Dune, Dune trailer? Surprisingly cool. funny. Mm-hmm. They're, it looks it's following them. Looks like they're following uh, the Lynch movie more than the miniseries. I mean, it's still a book, but it looks like a lot of the stuff Lynch highlighted in his movie, they're highlighting in this movie, too. Mm-hmm. And this trailer really shows off some of the more action, more sci-fi elements, and, of course, the celebrities. So it's like, oh, wow, this movie has every celebrity. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, it didn't say anything about 3D, which is disappointing, but we did get confirmation from another article before that it is 3D. And it is not mm. coming to um, HBO Max, so you have to see this in the theater. Yeah, uh, we'll see how the Delta takes care of it. Well, if you wanted to see it in 3D, you had to go to the theater anyway. Yeah. So, definitely excited for that. Now, we've talked about these, this in other podcasts, but I'll go ahead and include these now, because not all of us have had a chance to talk about these other trailers. So, uh, Classic Jake, what's your thoughts on the Turning Red trailer from Disney Pixar? Uh, it's really cool to finally see a red panda in something, instead of just the old standard old black and white ones. Okay, <laughs> and uh, the and and I'm a bit confused. Is this supposed to be Scotland, uh, Asia? I think Asia. New Jack, what do you think? Maybe America. Uh, it's absolutely hysterical, especially if you've ever dealt with anxiety or anything. I mean, it's very relatable, and you know, I really do like dig this kind of wear panda thing too. Yeah, I, I'm wondering if like it's going to be other animals, um, like. You know, if there's going to be like a tanuki, if that would be mis- not uh, appropriate for kids, or if they maybe they decided to do that first, you're like, no, because um, tanukis are kind of weird with Japanese culture. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, the, maybe the mom will have power. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Or the whole family are wear pandas. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be kind of funny, like Teen Wolf remake. Yeah. Oh, I like that idea. Yeah. Yeah. So you excited for this, uh, Classic Jake? Yeah, actually I am. Wow. The music sounded cool, rocking. I like the character designs. And it's like, I really hope it gets a 3D release. This could be really interesting. Yeah. And we got to give props to Disney Pixar whenever they make new content. And, you know, it's not a sequel or remake or whatever. Yeah. Now, I don't know how psychological this might be um but i don't care it looks fun um they, they don't all have to be super deep um movies that make you cry like a baby mm. no but i want them to be <laughs> <laughs> yeah i now want to see the mashup between this and kung fu panda oh yeah <laughs> yeah classic a new jake what are your thoughts on the encanto trailer it, it looks pretty good. Uh, I, I hope it's good. <laughs> uh, I mean, the, the animation looks really good, and uh, the story itself looks kind of good, if a bit standard of the type, but I'll still watch it. All right, and the other end, what are your thoughts on the Adams Family 2 trailer? <laughs> it, it's a movie. Yeah? Basically. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, why do they have to go on summer vacation when, you know, they hardly ever leave their house? It's a stupid idea. Yeah, I have flashbacks of the 70s TV show where their house was like a motorhome and Wednesday wore a pink dress. 
But was was that a cartoon or a live action? It was a cartoon. Uh. Um. So I'm gonna call out a YouTube commenter on the official MGM trailer that made me laugh, and I remembered it weeks later. Um. Riot Breaker says, "Quote: At least Hotel Transylvania and Alvin and the Chipmunks." Waited until their third film to make a road trip movie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's, ooh, that's that's a that's a sick bird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You should insert the uh, meme with uh, Leonardo DiCaprio toasting. Also, also another thing, they both survived up to four movies. <sighs> <sighs> it's just cliche, and. Um, yeah, not looking forward to that. All right, so uh, classic Jake, what your what's the next topic you want to talk about? Okay, let's. Uh, I guess let's talk about the Peacock deal. Mm. All right, so we got some deals here with Peacock, which now is become because of the I can't say the word because of legal reasons, but the worldwide sporting event that happens every four years. Wink, wink. Yeah. Mm. Um, Mm -hmm. They're on Peacock now. Uh, Peacock is starting to become a little bit bigger deal where people can't watch this anywhere else, so they have to watch it. So now Peacock has this deal with um, movies. So Universal is going to have the movies four months after they open in theaters. Yeah, standard. Yeah. It'll cut until their DVD and Blu-ray sales, but I mean, that's probably the point. And it's going to start in next year, 2022. Um, so it's going to take a little bit to get going, but it's going to be there. And that makes sense because Peacock is universal. the Basically the universal streaming app. Um, because NBC Universal owns Peacock. And Comcast owns all of that. <laughs> yeah, so it's that universe. So this makes logical sense. Um so it's going to, you know, other streaming platforms that they would have it, you know, obviously they're getting taken off. So um, Peacock is, Universal is going to really try to make this. Um, crackle. Yeah, not going to be Crackle. <laughs> not, you know. So, yeah, it's it's expected to be a big deal with um, just to get all these movies on there. And, you know, obviously we knew that these streaming services were going to, eventually get back claw back their movies one way or another to keep it onto their exclusivity because they don't want Netflix to get those watches people you know or, or whatever um, right mm-hmm. yeah so basically um, streaming is turning into another version of a cable package cable 2.0 yep exactly and we're going to be spending more than we ever did on cable and cable was too damn much as it was Mm-hmm. Yeah, and some of the cable deals are also kind of weird because I kind of want to make a rant about this, but it's really frustrating because like, I want to watch Rick and Morty, but I can't because I don't have cable. And I have HBO Max, so I should be able to watch it, but nope, I can't. And it's just like, it's ridiculous um, how some of these deals are. But like sometimes it's on Hulu, sometimes it's on HBO Max, and you really need a flow chart. Every, every six months to, okay, where are this movie I want to see? It, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think we're going to be coming up on streaming wars pretty soon because we're getting to the point with streaming um, platforms, nobody can afford them all and they're going to have to really pick and choose. Mm-hmm. So we're going to start seeing uh, winners and losers shaken out within the next couple of years and it's not I mean, pretty. Uh, Quibi already lost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And if anybody gives a crap about the Quibi shows, uh, Roku. Yeah, Roku's got them. So an- another deal, which we're kind of, it- it's kind of all weird because we know of these deals, but we don't know the details because contracts <laughs> and uh, you know we just know of them. Um, is the Amazon Prime Video and IMDb TV, which I don't even know IMDb has a channel, but okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, they have a nice licensing deal with Universal to bring certain movies over there, too. So, I guess it's going to be and Peacock and Amazon Prime. 
I don't understand how you have both of these deals at the same time. Um, well, so Amazon owns IMDb, so that that kind of makes sense. But yeah, it's it, it is confusing. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have a shakeout because there's getting to be too many channels, and mm-hmm. you can't afford them all. So we're gonna get to the winners and losers, and I'm just hoping some of these contracts aren't so long when a channel goes down that it sits in limbo and the show can't be seen for years and years because its rights are owned by a channel that went tits up. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I worry about like other stuff, like um, how certain things that don't fit into, like, okay, what about the Marvel um, shows that were on Netflix? Do, does Netflix still have that? Does Marvel go to, uh, you know, I think Disney now owns the rights back to Daredevil, but Daredevil would not fit on Disney Plus, so would it go on to Hulu or would it stay on Netflix? And and some of that kind of stuff where it gets really weird is going to be happening. Well, soon. my advice is, I know some of these Marvel Netflix shows did get like DVD Blu-ray releases. My suggestion is, if you want to see this stuff and continue seeing it, you may want to invest in the discs or you may want to go find them on a torrent site and download them because I got a s- suspicion those are going to become like lost media. Ugh. So obviously I don't like torrenting stuff, but sometimes with the legal stuff, there's no other option. <laughs> you, you, there, some things are lost. Yeah, exactly. And uh, I'm not saying you should. that should be your first option. I mean... But I'm not going to say don't do it either because that I've done it and it would be very disingenuous of me to say, oh, you can't do that. So, you know, if you can buy the disc, obviously that's going to make things easier than, you know, I know people have walked away from buying DVDs and Blu-rays and 4K discs. But mm. if, you, if you're a real collector, if you really want their content, you know, the, they can't take away and they can't censor um, your DVD <laughs> that what's already yeah. printed and it's on at there. Least it's... Not, at least not yet with the current technology. Uh, but if the internet goes down, pop in a disc. Yeah, More reliable as ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, you know, disc media does is is useful. And still, usually the best the uh, picture and audio quality still. So. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And 3D can't be beat, because if you've ever seen streaming 3D, it's normally mm-hmm. not nearly as good as what you get off of a disc. Mm-hmm. So, I imagine some of the bigger players um, may really get bigger, because they'll buy up stuff that are struggling. And, uh, like, Apple is multi, you know, worth a trillion dollars, ending with Amazon, almost. They're going to stay around. And same thing with Disney. They're not going nowhere. But Netflix, I, I'm not sure if Netflix is going to be around in 10 years, which sounds crazy now, but that is kind of, you know, maybe Netflix is bought up by Apple or something. Blockbuster's going to make a comeback and buy them out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know. I live in the state with the last Blockbuster standing, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's hope. There's there hope. Fingers crossed hope. <laughs> yeah, that they might make a comeback. Yep. You know, they're in one state, 49 more to go. <laughs> so, yeah, it, the streaming wars is getting to be really complicated. And, um, like, my wife started watching a show on Peacock, free Peacock, and you're able to watch the first three episodes. And after that, you have to go to Peacock Premium. And she's like, well, if I would have known that, I wouldn't have even started that. And it's like, well, you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But you can watch Boss Baby 2 on there. Uh, <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> There's just so much more to watch, especially for our Patreons and stuff. You know, I mm-hmm. just don't have the time to waste. Too much content. Yeah. Yep. And uh, I think that's Netflix's problem right there, is that Netflix used to be like the big one at first, and it first did all this, and then now... They have like 50 new shows every year, and you, you know, one of them gets second season. I don't know. Yeah, most of them are not very good. 
Yeah. And it used to be a Netflix thing where you got bloat, where you got, you know, 15 episodes, for every episode being an hour and a half long. And now you're like, okay, you get seven episodes for one season, and then people like it, and nope, no second season. So it's just like, okay. Mm-hmm. Instead of having a pilot, they have a season. <laughs> if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And uh, I think that's going to be probably Netflix's downfall, is throwing money at everything, because they're just investing so much money, and not keeping content that's fairly popular. They're just canceling everything and wasting that money. And of course for us, for 3d streaming, there's no, none of the big boys, you know, not trying to be male oriented, but just as a term, none of the big players here are going to have 3d. You don't have it on Amazon. You don't have it on Apple. You don't have it on Netflix. You don't have it on Disney. (laughs) So no voodoo. That's all I know of. And, God knows how long that's going to stick around. <laughs> they might go under next. Who knows? I mean, who owns Voodoo now? I think it was Walmart for a while, right? Yeah, uh, it's Fandango, and Fandango now is shuttering, so they're going to be Voodoo Fandango now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That sounds, that sounds about as dumb as Warner Discovery. Oh, yeah. NBC Universal is going to acquire Van- uh, Voodoo. So there you go. They're getting bigger. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, pretty soon it's going to be them versus Disney, and it's going to be kind of like Streaming Wars, the Highlander edition. So is Voodoo <laughs> stuff going to go eventually to um, to T- Peacock? I don't know. Will Peacock get 3D? I don't think so. But who knows? Yeah, well. mm-hmm. We might get lucky, but I wouldn't count on it. <laughs> um, like like Classic Jake said, the 3D is, is if you do have streaming 3D, it, it, you're lucky that if you get it working perfectly because even if you have high speed internet they may they may not have the the super high definition version on there they may have issues that give you the crappiest version on there because that's the issue where with like some movies and tv shows they are claiming to be you know hd or 4k or whatever but they're not and they look like terrible they look like crap compared to actually owning the dvd or blu-ray but some places are that great um it just depends what you're working at like you know apple looks fantastic it looks like they mm-hmm. are doing you know 100 percent 4k streams and like you can get that gorgeous look out of streaming from apple but i don't think that's going to be the case price. Yeah. yeah so i don't know if that's the case for all the other places and i don't think it is i think it just uh, hbo max looks pretty good yeah um, but I don't know if it has Atmos and Adobe Atmos and if it's all 4K or if it's a, it just becomes really weird. So, yeah, I, I'm really worried about the, the streaming wars keying off 3D, you know, if you don't have the discs. And it's hard enough to buy the discs anyway. So, mm-hmm. yeah, um, the one I guess the lesson here is if you really care about 3D movies, Buy the DVD and Blu-rays as soon as you possibly can. Don't hesitate because you may not get another chance. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So, New Jake, what do you want to talk about next? Uh, let's talk about uh, Leica and Coraline and Paranorman specifically. So, this is a uh, Fathom event. So to celebrate like a uh, Fathom events, uh, which is a U.S. thing, I don't know if they do it in other countries, where they have like uh, specific movies get re-released in the theaters, and you have to watch it on you know three or four showings over a weekend, and that's it. And most of the time, the Fathom events are older movies that you could buy on DVD and Blu-ray or stream. Yeah, for cheaper than the ticket, and it probably be better quality. Uh... Because some of their present, like, I was not impressed with their Ben-Hur presentation. Um, I I remember watching um, Superman, the Death of the Superman uh, animated movie a couple years ago. And I watched that via the um, Fathom event. And you could tell it was just the Blu-ray that was blown up. Because you could, it, you could tell it just doesn't look as good as a Blu-ray on a TV... You know, 50, 60 inch looks great, but when you blow it up to, you know, uh, theater size, not so much. Yeah, I mean, the only Fathom events I've been really impressed with is uh, Terry Gilliam's um, Don Quixote movie with with Adam Driver. Uh, 
Peter Jackson's They Shall, you know, Not Grow Old. And uh, when they ran that really cool uh, Nick, Nicolas Cage movie, Mandy. Mm. So um, two movies, two Leica movies are going to be part of this. And the first one's going to come out on August 24th. Um, obviously, you need to check your local listings because we don't know where this Fathom event's going to be, if it's going to be at all where you live. Yeah, and these looks like they're going to be one day, and they're different dates and different locations, and there's no... And, and, and from the listing, it looks like they are not going to be in 3D. Uh, the first one is Coraline, which fantastic mm-hmm. movie. Love Coraline. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. And the second movie is going to be... Um, Paranorman, which is coming out November 16th. Mm-hmm. Not as good as Coraline, but still decent. Yeah, I like <laughs> it. Yeah. So, um, it may be near you. It will be in 3D, but I'm going to say 40% chance, probably 60% chance it will be 2D only. But who knows? It just depends on your local theater and what they do. But I don't, I'm not going to assume it right now. Just buy the Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. Yep. So yeah, they have you know other things coming out. Uh, November they have Castle in the Sky anime, 35th anniversary. Um, they have uh, Science of the Lambs coming out October 20th. They have Citizen Kane coming out September 19th. You know, I never seen Citizen Kane in the theater, but I actually really like it. Um, and Star Trek set uh, four Voyage Home. 35th anniversary in August 22nd. Love that movie. I don't know if about you guys. <laughs> uh, it's really good. <laughs> yeah, but you can get it on disc cheaper. Yeah. Uh, coming out on 4K in uh, September, I think. Yeah, and if you had a 4K set, it'd probably be, di- you know, why waste the money on a Fathom event? Yeah. If you want to see it in the theater. But, but, but like I said, this presentation on some of those is terrible. It just depends on your local theater. Theater, but. yeah, and how much they care. Got to get that popcorn and drink sales, too. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Fathom Events is something that you never know if it is going to be 3D or if it is going to not going to be 3D or what movie is going to be there. You have to keep checking because you may have something there that, oh, I have to see it. Um, but we just want to throw that out there since both of these movies are 3D movies. Um, so right now, to buy Fathom Events, for Star Trek IV Voyage Home, it costs thirteen fifty three for me. Now, if I go to Amazon, I could buy it for seven ninety nine. Blu-ray yep. or DVD? Uh, I think that is just the digital. But the, the yeah, just digital. But the DVD should uh. be twelve ninety eight. Uh. So yeah. Um, up to you if you consider that worth watching in the theater for. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I mean, I definitely love Star Trek and that's a fun movie. Um, there's some some movies are, are okay, the Blu-ray is $11.60, so after taxes, yeah. it will be cheaper to buy the, the Blu-ray than to watch it in the theater. For one and you time. get extras and better picture quality most likely. Yep. And you can watch it over and over and over again. <laughs> yes. And pause it whenever you need to. So it's like, okay, I guess if you really, really want to see this in theater, you can, but... Yeah. If you're if you're bored, nothing else, yeah. And that's just the standalone movie. I've seen Star Trek, like, sets for, like, 20 bucks that include all the movies, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, like I said, the 4K is coming out in a couple months with the first four movies. Wise investment. So, uh, let's move on here. We got some news on Marvel. So, they said that they are now done with huge multi-movie deals. So, as you probably are listening at home or, or wherever, Marvel used to do these, like, eight movie deals with actors. And you're going to be in eight movies and include two or three cameos, and that's the contract. And now, that's not going to be part of the deal anymore. Which, it makes sense, because that way you could have more money for more actors. And the stories that they have may not be stories that they keep going to, and you don't have to have um, certain characters. You know, you don't need 
Vision to have a 10-movie contract. I love Vision's character, but just saying. I see this leading to a lot of recasting. Mm. Or just bringing out new universes for the characters. So, you know, like uh, a different Black Widow, a uh, different universe yeah. of Cole, you know. Mm-hmm. Or if uh, Tom Hiddleston gets sick of Marvel and they can't come to a deal, all of a sudden we get some other dark-haired TV actor to take his place and he'll be the new Loki. Well, he said he wants to play the role forever, so... Yeah, I don't see that but happening. hey, David, David Tennant said the same thing about Doctor Who, and we see how Fair. that went. Yeah. So, you guys are more negative about this than me, because I'm fine with this, because I know, I just see... I understand the business side of it, and I understand they just don't want to have those huge contracts um, and not have them do anything. Oh, and- oh, I understand why they're doing it. I just think if you want to get actors to cameo, you're going to have to get them to sign up on the dotted line, or you're going to end up paying them almost as much to cameo as a full movie. Because mm-hmm. like, I imagine you know, Spider-Man, the Sony deal... That complicated everything because they had a multi movie deal. Um, and I don't know if I assume Sony and Marvel are going to be hell yeah, let's have more so- uh, Spider Man movies, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, we'll see. And I wonder if this has anything to do with why Robert Downey Jr. unfollowed everything at Marvel on Twitter. I didn't hear that. Hmm. Yeah, so people were talking about it. I mean, I'm not on Twitter, so I don't know for sure. I was just kind of, oh, that's interesting, T. I mean, honestly, I don't care enough to go peek on Twitter to find out, but I'm just wondering if that had anything to do with it. Now, speaking about Marvel, we also got uh, the director of WandaVision is now going to be doing a Star Trek movie, which I love that idea. <laughs> yeah, I'm mm-hmm. fine with that. First yeah. female director for a Star Trek movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's nice to see they're bringing back Star Trek. So is yeah. it going to be the pre- the cast that they had? That J.J. Abrams had, or are they going to reboot again? I hear it's supposed to be a, a mix of the Kelvin timeline and possibly either the newer cast from the new show or maybe the next generation. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I read something along those lines. Yeah, we really don't know where the next Star Trek movie is going. <laughs> but I mean, they've been trying for five years to get a new Star Trek movie and no dice yet. Yeah. It's supposed to be like Noah Hawley was supposed to do one. They were supposed to be Quentin Tarantino directing an R-rated one. What's happening? Yeah, looks like nothing. Yeah. So, uh, you said it was a female. Uh, I see here that's supposed to be Matt Shakeman. Oh, sorry, wrong director. <laughs> uh, I, I was thinking uh, somebody well, else. Sorry, sorry for misgendering you, Matt. Sorry, Matt. <laughs> Now, we we talked about this on Patreon, but we, the public doesn't know our thoughts on WandaVision, but all of us love that show, right? Yes. Uh, yep. Better than Winter Soldier, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Yeah. Um, Marvel had a, a fantastic debut with this. And I love WandaVision. It's, it's just so much fun, and it works. And I, I love the twists and turns, and I could not wait to the first episode to air to watch it. Mm-hmm. I think J.J. Abrams is still supposed to be producing it, um, yeah, but yeah. It, it, it's really uh, CBS slash Paramount have been all over the place with this movie, and I feel like they are really hitting it strong with Star Trek re- recently, that they really want to make it into a bigger franchise, so I would not be surprised if this is a, a brand new Star Trek, not based on anything. It just, you know what, let's just have it new and just move on. And if they want to set it in the Discovery universe, go for it. They can. It's not that big a deal. If they want to have it in Picard timeline, sure. If they want to have it, you know, whatever. I thinking that they just didn't, they need to just decide and put it up and move on. And you know, I, I'm I'm happy for an idea of a new movie series. You know, brand new cast. And I mean, I do love the J.J. Abrams uh, universe. I really love those Star Trek movies, but I'm fine if they want to just pull and just move on. Mm-hmm. So, Classic Jake, what's the deal with Black Widow? Is it a hit or not a hit? Or why are people upset about it being a a hit? I'm confused by this. Uh, so am I. I just think... <laughs> just, uh, I'm really getting tired 
of this box office. Uh, I mean, the only thing box office should matter to is the people who invested in the movie put their money in. Uh, whether Black Widow makes $80 million opening week or $8 opening week, is not going to change the quality of the movie one iota. Yeah. So it was the biggest opening after the pandemic, but then it had a week, second week, and now theaters are upset because they were expecting it to be a huge amount of money, and it's not as big as they're expecting. Uh, it's still making money. It's but people may see it may end up being not like a super duper billion dollar hit it may end up being um one of the early mcu movies final box office instead of the end game box office well anybody following this podcast will know that i predicted there were going to be no billion dollar hits for a while and see i told you so I mean, the year's not over yet. Snake Eyes is coming but out. I don't think, <laughs> I, but I don't think we're going to get any. I no. honestly don't. Because uh, pandemic is technically ain't over, even though everybody's trying to pretend it is. And people discovered they don't want to put up or spend the money to go to a theater. Yeah, I mean, uh, Disney made $60 million in streaming alone for Black Widow that opening weekend, so a combined opening of $140 million ain't too shabby. Yeah, especially the way things have been, and the, oh, yeah. the economy is in the dumper. Yeah. So it's, it's weird because also some parts of the world don't have uh, actual theaters open anymore. They close back down because they don't have big supplies of vaccines or they have very very limited showings or uh, so it's very hard to watch this movie in theaters for different parts of the world so it's not a hundred percent back theaters open all the time um it just depends where you are and depends on your country's or local situation so it, it really, i mean it may me oh, go, go ahead. ahead oh no you go ahead it, it just really depends where you live I mean, I think it'll earn a billion dollars, but it's not going to be purely based on theatrical. It's going to be a combination of Disney Plus, that, and maybe DVD sales and whatnot. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. We'll we'll have to see, because I imagine a lot of people that did buy or or rented it at home with the premiere, they probably watched it like four or five people and, you know, make the bigger bang for the buck kind of thing. So Right. And they'll watch it again. They don't have to pay again. Where if you go to the movie theater, you have to pay there. So I imagine it being some, you know, one of those things that people watch at home. Maybe they share their password, and that's it. Um, and apparently, uh, there's been a lot of a lot of uh, pirates of this. So it's it's. I still think it's successful, even if the numbers don't look that great. I think. We just have to reevaluate how movies are going to be in the box office. And there are certain movies that are not going to make a billion, like Jake said. And I think those days are pretty much gone for a long time, if ever, mm-hmm. coming back. Maybe eventually. I have hope. Maybe not. But the thing is, that's not going to change the quality of the movies. All no. it will do is change the amount of money that is spent on making movies. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll get the mid-budget comedy back because I miss those. Yeah, and we might get some of the ind- more indie movies. You know, the lower budget. You know, under five million movies. Yeah. I miss those too. Yeah, and I think some of it too. It's a very competitive theatrical market right now. Getting new movies every week. Where before you may have some time where nothing big is coming out. This week is Snake Eyes and old um next week is other two movies and it's like these movies are turning out there's a lot of competition here and i i don't think i also think black widow is a very weird movie to compare um because Mm -hmm. black widow should have released a long time ago but it didn't so now some people probably don't care that much because they know what's happening to her in endgame and they don't see what the big deal is why i need to see this movie for this character um, so 
the, there is some lukewarm reviews for it, which I, I really love this movie, so I don't understand why people hate it or not like it that much, but it's just, it's not a fair movie to, to do this on, um, I think. I mean, yeah, they, well, they didn't dump on Fast 9 being kind of a disappointment. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So, we'll have to see how, how it all pans out, but I, I really think it, it's a weird situation that Black Widow got itself in, and mm-hmm. Marvel and Disney, and is it a success? It's up to Marvel. Um, if it's Disney, what well, their expectations well, were, you know, it, it's it's really hard to understand what is a modern um, hit. Well, it's mm-hmm. it opened at number one, so uh, discounting the Inhumans, uh, Marvel's track record of every movie opening at number one is intact. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so let's get to some listener mail. Now, this mail is from Twitter and from our patrons. Um, oh, wait, before we get to there, let's talk about the sum- uh, movie club for summer. So we're going to do another movie club for summer, and we're going to do this for August. So let's, um, let's talk about what the, the theme is. So we were talking about superheroes a lot. Let's talk about a superhero movie that came out before 2008. I, spe- uh, I specifically picked 2008 because that's when Marvel movies and, and such, the modern age, I guess, of, of superhero comic book movies came out. So uh, we're going to have two podcasts, one for patrons, which we'll talk about Spider-Man 2. Which Spider-Man 2? Man. So Sam Raimi, uh, Spider-Man 2, The Amazing Spider-Man 2, or Far From Home? The original <laughs> Spider-Man 2. All right. The right. Sam, the Tobey Maguire and Sam Raimi directing with Doc Octopus as the villain. Ooh. All righty. Thanks for the clarification. Second, second best Spider-Man movie. We'll talk about that for the patrons. Now, for the public, for everyone else, uh, we're going to have you vote as we usually do for Movie Club. And we have a selection of movies that you can vote from. And uh, the selection is X-Men 2, mm. Superman 2, Richard Donner cut, mm. Condor Man, <laughs> Orgasmo, <laughs> please, 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 please vote for Orgasmo and release the NC-17 cut. <laughs> Supergirl. Fantastic Four. Which Fast Fantastic Four? <laughs> the Fox I hope Fantastic the 94. Four. Oh, it's not the Corman one? Oh, please be the Corman one. Please be the Corman one. <laughs> <laughs> um, the 2005 movie. Um, to uh, be specific. Uh, uh, Flash Gordon. Uh, and yes! Barbarella. Condor Man for the win. <laughs> So, okay, what are our thoughts on these movies? I have not seen Barbarella. I have not seen Flash Gordon. I have I vaguely remember Fantastic Four. Um, I think Supergirl sucks. I think Orgasmo sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Never seen it. That literally does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, i never seen Condor Man. I am a big fan of Superman 2, Richard Donner cut. Not that good. It's good, but it's not that good. And I love X Men Two when it came out in theaters. I've not seen it since, so I don't know how that will holds up. So, New Jake, Reverse End, X Men Two. What are your quick thoughts on it? Honestly, I've never seen it. Never seen X Men Two. Wow. No. <laughs> All right, Superman Two, Richard Donner cut. You're not a big fan of. No. Uh, Condor Man. Never seen it. Orgasmo. <laughs> Never seen it. <laughs> Supergirl. It, it sucks big time, but I enjoy watching it because it's so crappy. <laughs> Fantastic Four. Yeah, it's not Peter O'Toole's finest moment, and it's also a lot of it's worst. It was at the 2005 or the 94 version. 2005 Fantastic Four. Uh, it's okay, sort of. I guess it sucks. Yeah, uh, Flash Gordon. Uh, never seen it. Barbarella. Never seen it. All right, 
Classic Jake, what are your thoughts on these movies? One sentence tops. X-Men 2. Mm, haven't seen it since the theaters, but I remember liking it. Superman 2, Richard Donner's cut. Haven't seen the Donner's cut, but I remember the second Superman movies being really, really good. Condor Man. Not bad. (laughs) But not particularly great either. Orgasmo. Awesome. Supergirl. Oh my god. Fantastic Four. Uh, Flash (laughs) Gordon. Hated it as a kid. Loved it when I saw it again ten years later. And Barbarella. Oh, it's it's uh, it's a great '60s comic book movie. Not as good as Modesty Blaze, but it's or Danger Diabolic, but it's good. All right, so we're gonna have us um, we're gonna do the same thing we usually do for for Movie Club and have y'all vote on it. And we're gonna have the first two weeks or so of August um, to give you guys a chance to vote. So we're gonna put up the poll on August first, and then uh, take down the poll on. August 8th, so that way you have a whole week to vote, and it will be ranked choice voting, so um, that way you get to rank your, your choices here. Now, some of these movies are more interesting now than they, when they originally released, because the dynamic has changed. X-Men being, uh, you know, this is the second movie in the X-Men franchise, compared to the entire X-Men universe being weird. Um, Superman 2 being different now that we saw Man of Steel. And the passing of Richard Donner himself a couple weeks ago. Um, rest in peace. Yeah, rest in peace. Uh, Supergirl having her own TV show now. Uh, that's being different. Fantastic Four being, of course, um, being revived in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And they having multiple movies that have failed. So there's some interesting things with these movies. Um but yeah, we'll talk about this. And of course, Spider-Man 2 with Toby. I mean, I adored that movie back then. Mm-hmm. And I imagine that holds up really well. But we'll see. Fingers crossed. And that was mm-hmm. for patrons. So, uh, patron, uh, you know, support us on Patreon. You can listen to that and God knows how many other podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> Reviews, podcasts, our shitty opinions. Yeah. Listen now. <laughs> and, yeah, and, uh, and and you know I'm going to eventually derail the conversation with some off the wall uh, observation. <laughs> so patreon.com slash 3D or 2D, and you'll have access to hundreds of podcasts that, um, and extended versions of podcasts. So <laughs> stuff that you have, don't know anything about, you you know. We are not asking for a ton of money, maybe a dollar or two a month. And that's not asking too much. So now let's get to the listener mail, uh, which we teased before. Some of this was from Twitter. Some of this was from our patrons. So uh, first question, what movies should have gotten a 3D treatment based on their trailers of the actual film, but did not get a 3D release? Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of those movies where we're expecting it to be 3D, but I guess not. Like, you know, Snake Eyes coming out this week. I, yeah, that part mm-hmm. should have been 3D, but I guess not. Yeah. Uh, Classic Jake, do you have any top of your head? Mm. Damn. I think I'm going to go with Danger Diabolic, because I figure that's going to be the only way I'm ever going to get to talk about this movie, <laughs> if I <laughs> mention it in this. <laughs> but, it, but seriously... Mary Obama should have made a 3D version of this. It would have been sweet. Um, I, I don't know. I, I, it's so hard because there's so many of those movies that came out that we thought were going to come out but never did come out. Um, so I don't really know. Um, I, I'm going to tease a little bit more of the Patreon. Spider-Man 2, the, the original Rami Spider-Man trilogy, I think would have looked great in 3D. Mm-hmm. So, outside of that, uh, I, I really don't have. It, it's it's hard to think about this. It, it's one of those questions that you just. It will be one of those things you think about for weeks and weeks. And oh yeah, this movie. Oh yeah, that movie. Um. So, all right. Next question. 
Um, and Cameron and James Cameron's 3D documentary, Deep Sea Challenge, you see some clips of the abyss in 3D. Do you know if Cameron ever planned to release this or any other movies in 3D that we never got? Uh, I don't know, but I think Cameron definitely had plans. I don't know if Fox allowed them to, to do with it, though. I mean, probably not because, I mean, Terminator 2, the 3D thing just didn't release in a lot of theaters. You know, I mean, like half a million opening weekend. So probably nothing else that'll come, except for Abyss or the Abyss, uh, Avatar 2, of course. Now, isn't Abyss one of those movies that's like lost? You can't stream it anywhere. You can't buy the DVDs either, I think. I mean, you, you could find the DVD quite easily. It's just, it's from 21 years ago, and it's non-anamorphic, and it, it, it won't fill up your widescreen TV. So, no, I mean, kind of sort of lost. They just won't release it in Blu-ray. I don't know why. Who knows, but I think a lot of things depend on how well Avatar 2 does. I mean, if it becomes a billion-dollar movie... I think you're going to see maybe the resurgence of 3D and 3D home releases, possibly. Fingers crossed. Yeah, please. fingers crossed. Keep hope alive. So, um, yeah, I think it's one of those things where it may be done in the vault, but it never, it may never actually get released because limited amount of 3D um, at home and just I think there's some weird things with the Abyss. And I don't know if there's like some kind of legal challenges or, or something to music or, or whatever that holds that back from getting re-released. Um, I th- it's just Cameron's perfection, and he's also a very busy filmmaker. And I mean, apparently he's been teasing this for years. He's like, yeah, I'm doing it. Here comes the 4K 3D uh, version of The Abyss coming out this fall or this winter. And, and it's just, he keeps teasing it. It's either he's busy or he's not doing it or... Money's run out. Something's something's there. Oh, uh, I I would have loved to see both of the Deadpool movies in three D. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. yeah, especially the second one with that opening with the bullets and stuff. Oh, that would have been so gorgeous. Yeah. Heck, even the Once Upon a Time Deadpool <laughs> would be cool in three D. <laughs> eh. All right. Hey, what? we're desperate for content here in three D. Fair. Hey, you got Jungle Cruise coming out next week. You got that. Yeah. Cool. Now I'm just hoping they don't. Oh, we're not going to have it in 3D here. Ah, no. Ooh. Yeah, well, I got my tickets, so I'm reviewing Jungle Cruise. So I'm excited. All right. Uh, next question. What's everyone's favorite Leica movie? I'm going to say Cor- Coraline. Mm, I would just have to say. Yeah, I'm going to have to say that because I haven't seen them all, but Coraline. Coraline. Right now, some some weeks it changes, but it's but I think we're all in agreement. Coraline, yeah, perfectly dark, beautifully animated, such a treat. Yeah. Everything I wish the Adams Family movies were gonna be. Yes. <laughs> oh, I wish Henry Selleck directed the Adams Family movies. That would have been so nice. Mm-hmm. And did it and stop and stop animation. Oh my God, that would have been so awesome. Oh, yeah. I mean, if, if uh, Tim Burton could do Frank and Winnie in stop motion, how come not the Adams Family? Mm-hmm, exactly. Um, what do you think is the worst one that you've seen? I, I'm not a big fan of Box Trolls at all. Mm, I, I've only seen, like, Box Trolls in passing. and It didn't really intrigue me, but that, that's been years since I've uh, seen that movie. There's not a Leica movie I will not rewatch. Um, I did rewatch Corpse Bride. Eh. It's not great. It's just okay. Oh, that's not Leica. That's uh, mm. just like him, uh, Tim Burton just being Tim Burton. <laughs> I mean, Kubo definitely is, is fantastic. So, and and Miss and Miss and Link's really, really, really good. Like I said, there's not a Leica movie I would not rewatch repeatedly. That's just for some odd reason Leica is not really popular amongst like film goers because none of their films have done particularly well especially missing link but that's sad because it's really good filmmaking and art and mm-hmm. disappointing um okay so what do you what do you guys think about the announcement of the 3d blu-ray release of andy warhol's frankenstein it's about damn time 
I mean, any any 3D content is good content, but I don't know. Andy Warhol just screams pretentious filmmaker. Oh, this is an awesome movie. Andy Warhol just slapped his name on it. He has nothing whatsoever to do with this movie. All right, tell us more about this because I have no idea what this is. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's a really good movie. Uh, the the director of it, uh, God, I'm turning. I'm blanking on his name off the top of my head, but he's been trying to get somebody to uh, restore it so he could release it, and it looks like he finally got somebody to buy it. And the money came through, and it is the 3D, and it is amazing. Okay. And I hope they, and I hope they have the uncut version because it's got some nice, gruesome fun. Uh, this released in 1973. Uh, was it called Flesh for Frankenstein? Because yes. I know there's some different titles. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah, that's when Andy Warhol kind of was no longer presenting it. Okay. That's the name I saw it under later. I did not see it in 73. Okay. And this is a rated R movie, so it is quite... Uh, originally was X. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> not <Nice>. for kitties. <laughs> yeah. Like I said, it's some gruesome fun. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, new Jake, or Classic Jake, you're excited for this, right? Oh, yeah. Very much so. Uh, I've about... Uh, I had the uh, cup. I had had a V, you know, a, a a disc copy taken from the old uh, VH. I think it's. I'm trying to remember the name of the Japanese system. Is it VHD or VCD? Yeah, they had. Uh, they they put out these like laser disc like discs of 3D movies, and Flesh for Frankenstein, aka Andy Warhol, was one of them. You know, they also had Creature in the Black Lagoon. Um, huh. Also. Yeah, all sorts of cool stuff, and these things were pirated. You get the you get them on eBay for years. VCD quality is terrible, though. <laughs> no, it's not VCD. It is like a laser disc. Okay, but yeah, it's not, but it's. I, but I think I think it was VHD. HD, not VCD. Okay, because video CD is yeah, it was very very <laughs> bad quality, and they came out like right. Uh, it was, well, it's not bad bad quality. But it's not like DVD quality. Uh, it had like 12p on the pixel scale. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I didn't say it was perfect, but they were really no. easy to master. And there's a whole oh, lot yeah. of Hong Kong movies. That's the only format you're going to find them in. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, we definitely welcome listener mail and either through Twitter or through Patreon. Um Obviously, if you're a patron, you're going to get your question on here. You paid for it. Um, you know, it, sometimes on Twitter, you may not get the response right away. or We may, may take a month or something because we got this originally for the 3D Show 100. But uh, we got this after we recorded, so we're not able to. But um, this, these questions from pa- our patrons, we got, I asked yesterday and I got them today. So we try to put these up as soon as we can. All right, guys, um, that's going to be it for 101. Uh, we're not doing video anymore. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of blew that. Sorry, folks. Um, yeah, I didn't think it was going to record that way. So uh, sorry, too, for editing that. But uh, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we laugh at ourselves. It's all good. You know, it, it sucks, but. It made it more fun, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. We we have faces meant for radio, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the viewership for that video version was not that much better than regular ones, so it's like, well. <laughs> well, I wonder why. <laughs> mm. I mean, um, we got 56 views on YouTube for that. Woo! And compare that to Boss Baby Review, which is 877 reviews. Views, Really? <laughs> like, shit. I mean, it, it really is all over the place. Um, we definitely recommend everyone to get vaccinated um, as soon as you can. I know it's, the pandemic is still going strong. and the Delta's soon- out there. 
Delta's out there and be safe out there. And it definitely is something that if you're vaccinated, we, faster things will get back to normal. More likely movies will get released in 3D. Um, because I worry that there might be a version of Snake Eyes that did they get got 3D, but not they decided not to release it because they're worried about box office or something. So faster things get back to normal, faster we get 3D movies. Fa- you know, it all kind of works itself out because some of these movies may never get the- uh, theatrical runs like The Tomorrow World or Tomorrow Land. <laughs> Tomorrow War. Tomorrow War. <laughs> um, never got, it just got on Amazon. And I think that would have been a 3D movie if it, if pandemic didn't happen. So still would have sucked. Still would have sucked, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> So it helps us, and it helps you have a healthy life and survive this. Um, so just, just please vote Orgasmo for the for the Patreons. Yeah, yeah. vote Orgasmo. <laughs> Orgasmo. Yeah. Yeah, Orgasmo for the win. I mean, <laughs> we'll have to see. Um, but yeah, we're gonna try to have the poll ready, and and it, it will be in the link in the show notes, so you could vote and your pick. Um, but yeah. I definitely think it's going to be some interesting conversations, especially since I have not seen half of these movies. And um, some of these movies, the context, like I said before, are going to be different because how different things are now. Um, so I remember X-Men 2 being like, this is the best comic book movie of all time. And everyone say, used to say that was the best X-Men movie, which I don't even know what the best X-Men movie is anymore. Um, X-Men Origins. <laughs> I was going to say maybe Days of Future Past, but I don't know. Um, yeah. First Class is pretty good, too. So. Yeah. We'll see. Deadpool. Um, yeah, Deadpool is a weird... It can't count as X-Men. But yeah, um, there's definitely some stuff here that could really be a lot of fun for our discussion. So please vote. Your vote will count. Uh, we don't get that many people voting, so it really does count. And it's going to be ranked choice, so that way you don't have to split your vote you know, you could really look at it and be like, okay, I want this choice, I want this choice, I want this choice. And it's super easy, barely in- inconvenience. It's going to be something that <laughs> it's going to be, it takes you five so minutes. what you did there. Yep. <laughs> I love you guys, Screen Rant. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ryan George, you rock. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's going to be it for us. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Uh, before this podcast wraps up, I want to thank my patrons. Thank you, Kano3D, Mr. Bengal5, and Kevin Winter for your financial support on Patreon.com. So that's going to be it for this podcast. Thanks for listening. You can find 3D or 2D on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Pinterest, Instagram, and more. Just look for 3D or 2D. Links are in the info box. If you want to send us listener mail, our email address is email 3D or 2D at gmail.com. Thank you for either listening or watching this podcast. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.